We're going to talk about Botox to the lower face. The effects of the lower face are a little bit more subtle and you can't use it as aggressively as you can in the upper face, but it's a wonderful adjunct to fillers. So first I'm going to mention Botox and then I'm going to, I'm going to overlay some of the uses of the fillers after you use Botox or without Botox. First of all, these are the main muscles that, that come into play in the lower face. They're, and sometimes, I, I may not include them all, but they're groups. The, the main player is the, the muscle around the lips, which is the one that purses your lips like this, and it's called the orbicularis oris. There are nasal tip depressors that elevate the tip of the lip and bring down the nose. You've got the muscles that insert into the nasolabial fold, and when they when they smile, that gets deeper, and there's muscles that, that insert into what we call the modiolus, which is a, a little bundle of, of fibers at the corners of the mouth that essentially are your puppeteer points. If you, if you smile and they go up, the corners of the mouth go up. If you, if you frown and they go down, they go down. And then there's the lip depressors down here. There are some more lip depressors here, but they are um, not as important as the one that, that goes right to the corner of the mouth. These actually you want to leave alone because when you smile, it opens up your mouth. And then there's there's mentalis muscle. Mentalis is the name of, of the of your chin muscle in the, of your chin area. And that helps open the mouth, but it also helps close the, the mouth in a way like this when you're when people have a lot of show of their teeth or they're worried about an overbite and they close their mouth constantly, you get some dimpling here. So we'll start with that one because that one's an easy one. Botox works very well in low doses there. And essentially you just put about three or four tiny drops there and the mentalis effect, that, that crinkling of the chin will go away. Now, the problem with that is that people who are used to in photographs going like this, they won't be able to, there'll be a little gap when they do that. But it usually is not a bad effect because when you, they're forcing their mouth shut, it looks um, unattractive the majority of the time. You think it looks better, but it doesn't. <laughs> the next favorite place to use it is, is in, in the depressor of the modiolus here. And uh, it's called depressor angularis, but we're just going to call it depressor of the modiolus. You put a small amount of, of Botox, three or four units there, and what it does, it doesn't affect the ability to, for your lips to open up when you're smiling, just it weakens that one and allows the ones that elevate to take over. Obviously, if you've got a neutral mouth, when you come in, you don't want to treat that because then you're going to have kind of a, a smirk, if you will, all the time. But if they're depressed and they're contributing to this rut that's called a marionette line, that's definitely a good place to do it. The other places where we use Botox, in small aliquots, it's around the mouth. And we're talking very tiny. Remember, I mentioned that that in the upper face, we often use 25 units, 12 and a half, 12 and a half, and 25 units here, and 25 units here. In the mouth, if I'm treating this area right here, I will probably use at the most six or seven units. Why? Because where the mouth will give you those lines because of the pursing, it also helps you sip and control the water so you don't want to go around drooling, which happened early on when we were trying uh, some of the Botox treatments around the mouth. The other one is an interesting thing. Take a look. If you have a lot of lines around your mouth, and they're, they're often considered smoker's lines, but they're a combination of this muscle and uh, sun damage, wind damage, loss of elasticity with age. Is there's a little transverse one right here, at, at between third between the nose and the lip, and that's from this elevator. And you can put a tiny little drop in there, and it improves it. Now, a lot of times these don't go away totally with with um, the Botox, because one thing we can't paralyze them totally, because then you have a non-functioning mouth. So this com this combination with a filler is really really good. And, and, I don't like chasing the smoker's lines or the non-smokers, it would be the straw sipping lines because they're difficult, they're tiny, and I'll tell you a little bit about, about that in a minute, but filling a 
I'm going to use a different color so you can see it a little bit better. Filling the lip line along here essentially erases these lines as they're going in to the lip. And believe it or not, that gives a wonderful effect that you don't really need to chase them individually up into the lip. Occasionally they're pretty bad and you want to treat them and you can use it. You can use some of the traditional fillers, Juvederm, Restylane, through a smaller needle and actually soften them up. And you have to use them through a smaller needle because those, it, those products are a little thicker and you often can see uh, um, a line like this will turn into like a little mole there by, by this thicker material. So you have to shred it slightly by using a smaller needle. Problem that it shortens their life. But we were very excited about a new filler called Bellaterra because it was thin enough to put through these small needles and uh, it has some other properties that we could use in the lines in here or here. But we found that just like the uh, Juvederm or Restylane that we were putting through a small needle, when you use this Belterra, you're not getting the six months or a year, year and a half that we're used to getting with these other fillers. We're getting two or three months, maybe four months, and they're gone. Maybe it's because they're thin enough that they're, the body can absorb it, we don't know. The other downside to Belterra is that because it's relatively new, it hasn't been approved with the built-in anesthetic of uh, lidocaine. So it, it stings a little bit more generally. Before any injections around the mouth, we use a topical anesthetic cream and we ice it. Ice it down because it affects the anesthesia a lot more and gives you almost like a, it's a freezing of the skin so in the deeper tissue so you have very little pain and it also shrinks the blood vessels, minimizing the bruising. I, I, I have one set of muscles here you do not want to treat. Is anything that elevates in the mouth I know early on they were using it to, to weaken the muscles to make the, the nasolabial folds deeper. Do not want to do that. The face will droop and it does not look good. So anyway, a combination of, of fillers is also used to treat this. It's one of my favorite areas. The marionette lines, you treat it here. It's wonderful. It wipes it out. It stays a long time, especially if you've been uh, using a, a little drop of Botox there. The other area because facial aging often is partly loss of elasticity, there's also loss of tissue, loss of bone. One of the areas that you get a, a, a dip in the tissue is here, right in front of the jowl, you get a little depression and a little bit of a narrowing. And we often use fillers to plump that area out and make them a dip in the border whole again. So here the combination of fillers and Botox is the way to go. You can't just rely on one or the other. And if you're going to pick one, probably fillers over Botox, but it's, it's a nice combination.